Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This video is part of a series on microeconomic reform. Previously, we established that microeconomic policies are government policies at the industry or market level. You can check out my earlier videos in the playlist for more detail. Today, we'll be exploring environmental management policies. If you can think of environmental outcomes as industry or market level outcomes, then you'll understand why environmental policies count as microeconomic policies. In this video, I'm gonna explain and give examples of four types of environmental policy. These are international agreements, targets, regulations, and market-based policies. Before we get into it, let me remind you that I've previously done videos on environmental sustainability. In these videos, I cover four environmental issues and their relationship with economic outcomes. You'll benefit more from this video if you're already familiar with the issues and concepts that I introduced in those videos, so perhaps watch those first. All right, let's get started with our first environmental management policy, international agreements. International agreements are necessary in order to prevent the tragedy of the commons, which is when global environmental outcomes are neglected, as each nation focuses on their own individual interests. International agreements put pressure on signatories to take international common objectives into account in the domestic policies. One relevant example that you may want to study is the Paris Agreement, which is a commitment to limit carbon emissions in order to reduce climate change. Other older examples include the Montreal Protocol, which committed to phasing out ozone-depleting products, or the UN Fish Stocks Agreement, which was created to prevent overexploitation of fish stocks. The second type of policy to cover is targets. Environmental management targets often result from these international agreements, and they're often used to guide environmental management policies. Two targets that are often discussed in Australia are the carbon emissions targets and the renewable energy target. Because Australia has historically relied on its rich fossil fuel sources for energy, the emissions targets submitted to the Paris Agreement have been more modest compared to other advanced economies. Our target is a 26-28% to 28 reduction by the year 2030. As for the renewable energy target, Australia aims to source 23.5% of their electricity supply from renewable sources by the year 2020. It's worth doing some quick research before your assessments to find out Australia's progress in achieving these goals. Australia acts on these agreements and targets by introducing regulations and market-based policies. Regulations are rules or laws to influence economic outcomes. To influence environmental outcomes, regulations can include prohibitions from damaging or polluting the environment. Examples include regulations requiring newly built houses to be energy and water efficient, such as forcing homeowners to pay for insulation or water tanks. On a business level, regulations could be used to restrict harmful production methods and inputs. Developers are also required to present environmental impact proposals for approval. Market-based policies are less rigid ways of influencing environmental resource use. These involve the use of financial incentives or disincentives, such as subsidies or taxes, to correct market failures. One form of market failure is negative externalities. Because environmental costs are not taken into account by the price mechanism, the social or environmental supply curve sits above the private supply curve. This implies that had we considered the environmental damage associated with the production or consumption of the good, we should be paying a higher price and producing a lower quantity. Taxes increase the price to reflect the social cost, shifting the supply curve to the right. This is also known as internalizing the externality. One example is the carbon pricing scheme that was in place from 2012 to 2014 in Australia. The idea was to shift energy production from carbon emissions to clean energy production. This brings us to the other side of market-based policies, the subsidies. Subsidies are used to promote merit goods, which are goods where the environmental benefits are not taken into account by the private sector. With merit goods, the social demand curve sits further out to the private demand curve. This curve illustrates that in an ideal world, consumers would be willing to pay a higher price and consume a higher quantity. But since they're not, subsidies are used to shift the supply curve to the right to boost the quantity sold. Solar panel rebates are an example of subsidies for a positive environmental outcome. These subsidies increase the uptake for solar panels, helping Australia achieve its renewable energy target. I hope that my explanations and examples have made it easier for you to understand the four types of environmental policies. In my next video, I'm starting a new series on one more type of microeconomic policy, free trade versus protection. This overlaps with the global economy topic, so it's gonna be an important one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Facebook to make sure you don't miss that. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share the video. And I look forward to continuing to make HEC economics easy for you. See you next time.